Hi everyone. For this next video of scrapplications, I'm going to be uh, creating some tags. Um, I took some cardstock and cut the tag shape out and punched a hole. And I'm going to be collaging on some scrap bits and also doing some stamping and um, just using up, you know, some more of the scraps in that way. And I think these will be fun to use in um, my new junk journal. I've been um, recording some of the process of that uh, for you. I think these are going to be really cool to use in that journal. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs>
Okay, so you can see how um, fun these tags turn out to be, and it is so rewarding and just so great to be able to use these bits and pieces that are laying around. Uh, do, did I use them all up? Of course not. We're always going to have scraps because we make things. We're going to always have scraps. And I consider that a blessing that we have scraps because we always have something to create with. Period. Well, we will always have something because look at what you can create just using those little bits and pieces. So um, I added a little bit more, you know, stamping here and there, just little bits where I felt like um, things might be just a little bit empty still, um, but nothing major. And uh, I also created a couple more tags I wanted to show you. I did these off camera because it was, you know, it was repetitive. I was doing the same thing. Um, basically just using different colors is all I was doing. So uh, this one has some stamping at the top and at the bottom. And then uh, just the greens and blues uh, papers added. And um, I just love it. I mean, it's just using little bits and pieces. These these little blue and white striped pieces are from a uh, check register. <laughs> so it just goes to show you, you can use all kind of things. There's some security envelope uh, in here and here and um, some painty papers and some scrapbook paper. Uh, these dots that you see here are um, actually a piece of tissue paper and I had glued it down to a piece of uh, printer paper so that it was uh, it would already have a good white background and stuff wouldn't be showing through because I did want it to be more opaque so um, yeah I wanted to mention about the stamping at the top and at the bottom and maybe in the middle like I did here if you don't have enough scraps of a certain color um, you can always stamp ahead of time and kind of use that as like one of your pieces. So I did that at the top and bottom here. And um, you could tell by the piles of scraps that I took out that I was just gathering things that um, had similar colors and looked good together. So that's the process that I used to, to go about doing this, was just grab things like this, I had this painted paper and it had teal and yellow in it. So I grabbed this one, which also had teal or turquoise and yellow in it. And then there was a piece of tissue paper that had uh, green and turquoise. And then I realized this piece of scrapbook paper had green and turquoise and uh, jelly print back here and then stamping with the green. I mean, I just kind of, you know, picked something that had colors I liked in it. And then I gathered up all of the bits that had those same colors in them or something similar. And uh, so that's how I, you know, went about uh, pulling out the scraps, that's the process I used. And this one I also made uh, in like a teal and purple uh, and orange for like, the orange is kind of like the pop of contrast, you know. This was a spirograph, you know, design that I had drawn out and I used half of it in something somewhere along the way because I only had half of it left. And so I found it in my box and I was like, that's perfect, that'd be beautiful at the top of a tag. <laughs> So I just put it there, and all the rest of these are, you know, stenciling, jelly prints, uh, more, you know, jelly print type designs, a little bit of stamping with a foam stamp there, a jelly print on music paper here, and um, and this little butterfly, honestly, I found it in a box. I had no idea when I made that, <laughs> but it literally has, half of it is teal and half of it is purple, so it's just, you know, these little serendipity things are really great when they just, you look at them and you go, wow, I didn't even plan that, you know? So um, this pattern I used a couple of times uh, on this one and on this one, that's from a uh, very old Hallmark um, shopping bag, so had saved that a long time ago, finally got to use it. So these are the ones that I made that are in um, pretty colors, and I also did one, I want to do one in black and whites, because I think that'll be really nice, and then I can add a pop of color on the top for, you know, like an accent or something. Um, but these are the ones I did in color, and I also did one in brown tones, which I really like. Um, this was the first one I did, and it was, I did it on a manila, tag because I knew that I was going to be using these color tones and um, I wanted to mention that these uh, shipping tags that come with the uh, reinforcement already on it sometimes that's hard to cover and then you, you, you kind of want to keep the reinforcement and it's 
hard to cut around it and all that stuff. So I thought the stamping at the top was a really good way to get something cool at the top without having to fuss with the papers and trimming and all that cutting business. So I stamped at the bottom and I stamped at the top. I stamped in the middle and then I stamped on top, uh, as you saw in some of these others, just to kind of tie it all together and add a little bit more um, interest to it. So these are mostly scrapbook papers. Um, I think all of these are scrapbook papers. This one is actually a piece of paper uh, washi tape and the rest are scrapbook papers. So that was a lot of fun. And I wanted to show you, because um, you're going to be saying, well, what do you do with them now? Because so many people are concerned about what do you do with a tag once you've made it. Well, I want to use these, like I said, in my little um, junk journal that I'm uh, making or you know filling now. And um, so I pulled out some bits that I thought I would show you some different options, like for this brown tag particularly. Okay, so here's one that's just some leaves that were cut off of either an envelope or some stationery or something. And I mean, that that just looks gorgeous, just like that, you know? And it, this even reminds me of a fence almost <laughs> over here when you put the leaves on there. So, so there's that, okay? There's also, um, I've got some little watercolor pumpkins that I had um, done with my grandkids one day. And something like that is beautiful. You know, that's a perfect little fall tag. And it doesn't need much else, just some little pop of something colorful, you know. Um, I also had this little um, bit that I had printed out years ago that I used, uh, you know, in some scrapbooking thing or something. But you could use something like that along with a pumpkin, you know, and, and cut this into a tag shape if you want to. And, you know, just any kind of little bits. Just look at it and see what it looks like to you. To me, this tag does look like fall. Um, here's a couple of little printable tags, you know, like I could add an additional tag right up here at the top with this and have some cute little something on there. And this is a brown one, which doesn't add much to the tag. It's nice. It looks okay, but it just have, keeps it in a monochromatic sort of thing. If you want to add the pop of color, you, you throw in some orange, you know. <laughs> so um, that was my ideas that I thought of when I, when I thought it reminded me of fall. Now, there's, an, there's other options, too. This is uh, one of those girls, of uh, Jane Davenport girls, that came off of a product packaging. You can see this was around the edges of a box, and uh, that was on the front like that. And I just trimmed it out. I've got a couple of these that I trimmed out, but look how cute she looks on this, on this tag. I mean, it suddenly isn't a fall tag anymore. <laughs> so depending on what you put on it, um, here's half of a flower that I found in my box and I noticed her lips were red and so I was like, you know, that would look really cute. Like, she could have a big flower in her hair and I just love that and it, it just works. So there's other options. Don't let your brain limit you when you look at something like this and you think, oh, that, that must be for fall. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> so as I'm showing you, you can do a lot of other different things. So here's some contrast to put a little bird in a blue color, which really pops, looks adorable. Draw in some little legs and um, you got a cute little tag with something different and it's not necessarily about fall. Um, here's a picture from a catalog. Look how beautiful that is. I absolutely love that one. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do with this tag, and it's going to be hard to decide now that I've <laughs> pulled out a bunch of different options, but I think that really looks, just looks fantastic. So, um, that's a, that's a uh, possibility. And then I've got these little um, eucalyptus leaves that I watercolored, uh, I don't know, last year sometime. And I thought they looked really pretty on there, too. And if you take uh, and add some, um, you know, some ribbon or, or something pretty, you know, around along the bottom, you know, that would be really pretty. Put a word or a phrase, quote or something up there and add some rickrack or something like that across the bottom. You've got a beautiful, uh, a beautiful tag. Put some uh, teal colored ribbon at the top. So there's lots of different options and these uh, can be used to, to to be something beautiful to put in your journal and then you turn it over on the back and do your journaling. So that's my little scrapplications for today and um, 
I just, I had so much fun. And I mean, I always do when I grab the box of scraps and something to glue them to, I'm always a happy camper. So <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed this and you'll be grabbing your scraps out and making some fun things. And um, make sure that you post them. I, I keep, I, I had to stop for a second because I knew there was something else I needed to remember. I keep forgetting in the uh, Scrapplications videos to mention, um, the uh, Facebook group that I have that is specifically about using scraps and it's called Random Remains Revived. And I know I've mentioned it before and a lot of you are familiar with it, um, but some of you may not be. And so uh, I'll be posting uh, this video in that group. And um, lots of people post all kinds of ideas and different ways that they use their scraps. So it's really a fun group. And um, so uh, we'll put, I will put the link, I mean the link is already in the uh, description of my video, but I will put it up a little higher too so it's easier to find. Just come join us and have fun and get inspired by all the different uh, creations that uh, lots of people are making showing how they use their scraps. Alright, until the next time, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.